Welcome everyone to another Blender Days of Type. Today we are looking at wind again, but this time we are focusing on fields of long grass or grain type plants. Now, of course, no two fields are the same, but we know that there are certain aspects that we need to try and emulate in our scene. Now, I've tried to come up with a system that is directable, one that will enable us to control all those global parameters. We need to be able to create a base of any size distribution of plants. We need to be able to control the small swaying movements they make in a breeze and how windy it is overall. We also need to be able to determine uh, how many individual gusts of wind there are and their strength. And we need to be able to dictate when and where all this happens in our scene. So let's get started. So here we are in Blender. I've already got a couple of objects in our scene. I have an emitter that I've subdivided 30 times. And I also have a substitute mesh for our plants that I've colored on every side so that we can see its orientation and rotation. So I just want to create a vertex group. Uh, C select. Control G, assign to a group, and that's it. Now we are going to be using a particle system. Uh, there's an issue with geometry nodes at the moment, and I'll demonstrate that problem in a moment. And if that issue gets fixed in the future, then it's just going to be a simple process of swapping out the particle system for a geometry node system. But for the moment, in Blender, to use objects in particle systems, they need to be orientated the right way. It needs to be rotated on the x-axis 90 degrees in the negative y direction, and then apply that rotation and scale. So. Let's just get that out of the way for the moment. And let's add a particle system. So first we want hair. We want to check advanced. I will leave the number for the moment. We don't need dynamics. We do need rotation. We want to render that object. Uh, we'll increase the size, 0.5 will do. We'll go down to the vertex groups and the density, we'll choose that group. And back up in rotation, just leave everything the same except for phase to one, randomness to two. And there's our field. Uh, now, just before I go any further, I do want to point out that scale matters in this uh, process. So this emitter object has been scaled uh, 10 times. And in any project that you create, you're going to have to uh, work with scale to get the best results that you would need in your scene. Okay, so we've created our basic distribution of plants. But now we need to control the small swaying movements that they make in a steady breeze. Now, how do we do that? Well, if we select our emitter object and go to the modifiers tab, you can see our particle system here. We want to add a displace modifier. Go to the texture settings, choose clouds. This is fine for the moment, def to one. You can adjust these as you see fit. Uh, this depth actually uh, is important and we'll get back to that. Clearly that's all too strong. So we just go back to the modifiers, lower this uh, to 0.1, maybe 0.2 in this case, just to demonstrate it. Now, one thing we can do with that noise texture that's influencing this geometry 
is we can determine what coordinates to use. And in this case, we want to choose another object. So if we just add an empty, move it over here, I will call that empty this. We'll add a keyframe location. We'll go to the end of our timeline, move it a little bit by location, and that'll do for a start. We choose our emitter again. We can come back to this panel, choose object, choose that empty. And if we play our animation, it's moving quite fast, but you can determine how fast this moves by the keyframes that are set for this empty or coming back to your textures and increasing this. We'll choose one for the time being. If we come back to the modifiers, you'll see that our plants are not responding to this movement at all. But that's just because of the stacking order. So the displacement modifier has to be above the particles. And now all of a sudden, these plants are now responding to the underlying geometry. I'll just slow this down a little bit. Go to the end of my timeline. Bring this back a bit. High location. Okay, this is very extreme, but I just wanted to point something out. Right now, this is very unstable, and this is as far as I get with geometry nodes. Uh, the system glitches the objects rotate around their axis uh, wildly and uncontrollably, and it's no good for what we want. But if we come back to our particle system, up the top, there's this little checkbox called regrow. And if I check that, straight away, the whole process becomes more stable and begins to react to the underlying geometry the way I need it to. There's no glitching, there's no popping in and out of particles. They're not rotating around their axis, they're maintaining their orientation. And so at the moment, this is a lot more stable, which is great. So let's just calm this down a little bit, come back to our modifiers, lower this. Now you're starting to see our plants gently moving in a steady breeze. That's completely controllable. Now, if we come back to our texture settings, you control the speed and severity with this texture uh, and the uh, empty that's controlling it. But this depth is interesting where the particles will move quite smoothly if you want, or if you want an agitated breeze, you simply increase this depth, which increases the, I guess, the, the octaves used in this noise texture. But the higher you push this, the more agitated the particles become. And that may be what you want, it may not be but it's completely controllable by you, the artist. Okay, so we have our plants moving to a steady breeze and I'll just stop it there. Just pay attention to this uh, emitter. If we go back to the particle uh, system, we have a render tab. We also have a viewport display tab. We don't want this emitter to be shown in the render. And we're only using it in our viewport as a reference. 
So if I turn that off, and I'll just add a simple plane, scale to 10, add, excuse me, add a texture or, or a color to that. Maybe raise it up to about there. We don't have the emitter uh, and its movement showing anymore. And now for all intents and purposes, we have a field on a steady ground that are interacting with a some kind of breeze. Okay. So let's go back uh, and show that emitter again in the viewport and we'll get rid of the ground plane. Okay, so there's the first step in our process, but it's limited. Looks fine if we're on a flat surface, but what happens to our particle system if we want uh, hills, mounds, and undulating surface, uh, as you would find in nature, of course? What happens to our particle system then? Well, it actually breaks, and I'll just demonstrate that. So if you go into edit mode, uh, proportional editing, G, Z, the particles are of course emitted along the normal of this underlying emitter and plants don't do that. Plants grow more vertically. Even on a hill, even on the side of a hill, they are going to grow more vertically, of course. So this doesn't look very natural. So how are we going to fix this? So if we choose our emitter again, go to edit mode, select all, go to edge mode, right click and mark everything as sharp. And go back to object mode. We'll go to our modifiers. We need to add two more uh, modifiers. One is an edge split, and one is smooth. Now the edge split, we need to uncheck uh, edge angle so that it's just looking for edges that are marked sharp, and we marked everything sharp. And for this smooth modifier, we want to uncheck X and Y, so it's only smoothing on the Z direction and we boost this factor to two. And now again, the particles aren't responding to that because the order of the uh, modifier stack is incorrect. So we need to uh, lift these above the particle system. So edge split first, smooth second. This is not working at the moment. We need to go back to our particle system, go to source, and tell the particle system to use the modifier stack. And as you can see now, because our underlying emitter is being cut up and modified so that the faces are more directed towards the Z direction, our plants are now looking more natural. So wherever they are on the hillside, they're still reacting to the wind, but directed more in the Z direction. And if we want to create that ground underneath, uh, then we can simply duplicate the emitter, go back to the modifier stack and delete them all. Go back to your emitter. Uh, don't show in the viewport. And we now have, let's lift it above the or origin points of these particles. And we now have our grasses on a hillside.
Okay. Let's get rid of that. Bring our emitter back. Oh, that's in the render, excuse me. Viewport. Select all. And we'll just flatten this out again. Something like that. Uh, select all. Let's go on the Z, Z direction, zero. Okay. So we're back to our flat field. Our grasses are moving slightly in the breeze. We can control how windy it is, uh, how agitated the breeze is. Uh, so our next step is to create those gusts of wind. So our gusts of wind are actually created by wind force objects. So let's add one. Bring it out. R Y ninety. And you can see this is having some sort of effect, but it's not responding as we want yet. Just back in the particle system i just want to go to the physics tab and just boost this dampening uh maybe not that much maybe i don't know five um come back to the scale something more like that now let's have a look at this uh, Force object. Now, if we go into the physics tab, we have a few controls here. Firstly, we want this set to point. Strength can be, I know, we'll just put it to 10 at the moment. Everything else you can basically leave the same, but we just want to change this power, change it to about three. And when you do that, they now become responsive to this wind object. We are not using, we go back into the particle system, and we're not using dynamics. But they are responding to these force objects. So maybe two. All right, so we have our wind force that creates our gust of wind. We can duplicate these uh, as many as we want. And just bring these up. We're actually aiming for the base of these meshes to have the desired effect. Now we could move all these space them out a little bit and animate all these as we want but i found the best way or rather the problem that i came across is okay what happens when i want to change the parameters i want to massage the scene a little bit to make it work properly i'm not happy with some aspect I want to change maybe the strength or I want to change the power slightly. I can't do that globally for all of, all of them. Uh, so we need a way of being able to control these two parameters because I know that I'm going to want to change them. But if I get all these set up in their positions, then I'm going to have to delete them all, change the settings on one, then duplicate them around again, and so on. So I found the best way to do that is just to get start from scratch. If they will let me choose them. Okay. Starting from the beginning, we have our wind force. 
you want to add two empties and choose spheres. Bring them over to somewhere here. I'll uh, duplicate that. Bring that over. Let's name them empty strength. Empty power. So we have our ballpark figures already chosen. We're happy with that for the moment. The best way to control uh, as many of these force objects as we want is to link those two parameters to these empties via drivers. So let's do that. Just right click. At a driver, this little screen will pop up. It's already got variable plus 10. That's good. That's what we want. When we want to choose the object, uh, empty strength, and we want the Z location. Okay. Go back to the wind object, go to power, right click, add driver. Same again. We want the empty, this time empty power, uh, Z location. So now we can go to these two empties uh, and lock everything that we don't need. Uh, to help with that, I'll simply create a little area here for the 3D viewport. Go to side view one by hitting one on the numpad. And now I have these two drivers driving this wind force. One more empty that I want. Is. This guy here, and I want to parent the wind object to that empty. Control P. When I want to move this wind object, I animate this one empty. So let's go back to frame one, add a keyframe, location, go to the End of my timeline. Uh, somewhere there for the moment, I location. Okay. Now I can duplicate these wind force objects. They will inherit their the parent of this empty, and they will inherit the drivers for these as well. So let's try that. All right, so I have a basic scene set up. And if I'm not happy with it, I think it's too strong. It's bending the plants over too much. It's not responding the way I want. The placement is okay. 
I can still go here to these drivers and know that this driver is locked to the Z uh, location. So I just have to press G, keep an eye on what's happening here and just move it up and see if I like what's, what's happening. Again, if that's too much, bring it down. Keep adjusting till I'm happy. Somewhere there. Let's just add a ground plane in. back to our emitter in the where are you viewport just raise it up a little bit to account for the origin points again we're just adjusting the scene the way we think we want it In fact, we can swap out. Uh, if you noticed, I've already got a collection up here, collection plants. I'll just go down to render. Instead of object, I go collection. And the collection I want is that. Let's increase ambient occlusion. And the effect is obviously a little bit too strong, but you get my point. We now have a system that we can adjust. It can look like a breeze if we want it. It can look like gusts of wind are moving through the grain fields. Uh, it could even be uh, animated to make it look like animals are moving through the grain fields. It's completely up to the artist. It's completely directable. You can determine the look and feel of your scene. And the end result is completely up to the artist and we're not tied to a simulation system. Okay, so I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.